Hi, I'm Chu Han, founder of Surfboard. And I am panicked about boring board meetings. Hey Howard, what's up, my man? Um, I'm up. You're up. I'm up. The whole gang's up. Today, I want to dig into a pet peeve, and it's not、uh, nose hair, although that is a pet peeve. Not this time. It's not the two really weird hairs that grow out of the top of my ear, which are spotted easily spotted, but like why?、Uh, just a, just God laughing at us. Um. So yeah, just, I'm late today. I, I spent twenty minutes grooming, just so that you wouldn't comment on some odd hair coming out of my out of my body.、Okay. Do you have those kind of problems? Your hair、uh, is perfect. Do you、I、have like man weirdness? I have hair when I need it, and mostly not where I don't. Yeah. And then last yesterday, I tried to do a side plank, and I just <laughs> went right into it. I just was like, okay, let me just see if I can do a side plank. And then was、yeah. I couldn't sleep after. I was so disappointed.、Uh, So we're completely off the subject. By the way, the subject today is governance, and、uh, so you can、right. see I'm taking that seriously right here.、Yes. There's no governance of the opening this、uh, podcast. <laughs> no, But anyways, I, I got to tell you some funny stories about me. So sleep. You, do you have a problem sleeping? You snore. I do have problems sleeping. Yes. Yeah. So so sleeping. We haven't decided because I have so many mental problems. If it's a mental thing for me, which I think it is. Everybody knows that knows me. I have an Ambien thing. I need to know where they are at all times. I lose my mind if I don't know that I have an ambient for that night. It's a crutch,、hmm. whatever you call it. It's a crutch. It's a it's a、uh, thing that I do. I don't feel one way or the other about it. It's just a habit. Anyways, I've tried it all. You know, we've had Spooner on, Ryan Spoon. We've talked to Eight Sleep. We talked to Mateo. Yes. And I didn't buy a mattress, but now I have. We talked to Whoop. Couldn't make him laugh. Um, yeah. <laughs> But you know,、I've, my whoop is in the corner,、uh, not to be dealt with again. I don't have an Apple Watch. I don't believe in any of this. I don't drink.、Um, Maybe you have a tequila、drinking. yesterday, but I mean, I don't drink. Right. I have bad eating habits. And, and this Mateo got in my head with eight sleep because it makes sense. He was talking about sleep as fitness. Blah 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 blah. Anyways, a year later, Tom, Gary, Ryan Spoon, you know, enough people like it works. So I ordered the eight sleep two grand. Ellen orders it two grand dish, the pod, and it just sits on our kitchen. It's big <laughs> for two grand. Rather a big prod. <laughs> so I don't know. I was didn't want to call you.、Uh, I call you for a printer or something, but not something like a sleep pod. And then you know Tom was avoiding me,、um, <laughs> but Ryan came to stay with us. Ryan Spoon to to talk about a couple things we were working on. I think、right. you saw Ryan when he was. Yeah,、there. I did. And.、Um, So it just sat for a month. Ellen was pissed. Was two grand. <laughs> we we wasted money on worse things. Did you get it set up? Yeah. So Ryan Spoon came to the house, and it, it definitely is hard to set up for people that are going to get it. And I would say ninety nine percent of the people that had of、um, interacted with me about the product have said good things, but the one percent have been, been pretty clear. Like I'm going to be sending it back. Good friends of mine. And no problems, right? We got set up. There's like kind of a PC thing that's attached to it. Hums. It's not easy, right? And away we go. And of course, Ellen and I use her error right away. We we wake up the next morning. I'm like 99. I'm like I'm not a nine. I got like a 99. I'm like well, I mean, listen, I'd be happy to take the 99, and especially in college where you know you cheat, you get a 99, like job accomplished. But a fake sleep number doesn't help me. Like if I don't feel like I got a ninety nine. So anyways, it turns out I was set up on her bed. Like we had crisscrossed、uh, the software set. <laughs> so of course she was a twenty nine that night and freaking out about. Oh, I got a problem sleep. I go no no no. Let me check the app. And we were flip flop. So anyways, about two weeks into this, I don't know. I don't feel like、uh, it's supposed to. Anyways, well, you are slightly technically challenged.、So. Technically challenged. Technically skeptical. But in in principle, eight hours or so that you spend in bed should be it's important. It should be useful, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I I, I feel like、uh, I want it to work, but nothing yet. Which brings me to governance. Yes. <laughs> 
So anyways, what Ainsley, a segue. I want you to work. I'm going to continue to give you a chance, but Ellen is pretty stressed out about this because it gave her a new thing to OCD. I'm not OCD about it. I could leave it on the bed the rest of my life and never turn it on again and go, well, you got me for 2 k <laughs> but I'm definitely not going to pay for the app. Whereas Ellen's like, she wants to somehow make money off this if we turn it because it's cost her time. And she is just using this app more than she uses Facebook at the moment. All right. Has our guest stayed with us? Uh, she might still be here, yes. So um, this had nothing to do with governance. But uh, it is a pet peeve of mine, governance, Canute, because we are seed investors. We've invested maybe in 150 companies, maybe more if you count personal investments. But at social leverage, probably 150 companies over the last 15 years. Companies work. They don't work. We take it pretty seriously. You know, I'm not a board guy, but we declare that early on. You know, I'm best served on text or as an advisor. Like if Canute had a board. You, I would say, Knut, I'll be an advisor to Knut Enterprises, but uh, don't count on me to come to meetings and steer you. Would, does that make sense? That might make you fall asleep. But I'm upfront about it. Because if I said I was going to be on your board, I'd come unprepared. I wouldn't read the board deck. And what benefit is that? The problem that we have in this world is everybody thinks that a board is a glamorous thing or gets paid too much. And this goes down from public company and now has extended itself, especially the seed as we as we had this uh, funding cycle go on and on and on to this lack of governance and and lack of governance means many things it means that the people that give you money don't know how to govern that's not a good thing but that happened in this funding cycle and we have these young people who now receive capital and don't know how to get governance they don't know what governance looks like they don't know how to prepare a board deck you don't learn this stuff you know, we watched uh, Trading Places, we watched Back to School, we watched, you know, what we we learned from movies, we learn from doing, and these this generation will learn from doing, but when you put money in young people's hands, you need to have governance, and we're seeing this now with the WeWork breakdown and FTX, and we're seeing it with, uh, I'm hearing it through uh, funds and through other calls, there's a lot of problems in the system. So how do we stem this? We have to create tools. Software is a great way to create tools that, are, that makes the process of governance doable, that helps founders get governance. And Social Leverage, uh, Gary, my partner, invested in a really cool startup. And we have the founder here, Chuhan. Uh, the company is called Surfboard. And Surfboard's mission and job is to help founders and boards and advisors stay in the loop build a better system for communication and board deck access and retrieval and compilation and just the overall world of governance. Much like Carta helped the cap table and AngelList helped people raise money and distribute ideas and help people connect, um, Chuhan's vision at Surfboard is around governance. So let's get Chuhan on the board, on the call, not on the board. At least I didn't say fraud. <laughs> what do you call those words when you say a word and you don't mean it? Right. I just said board because we're Chuan. talking about board. Hi, Chuan. Hi. And did I give, let's just jump right into it. Uh, how old are you and why did you agree to do this podcast? <laughs> well, I've got over 10 years of career experience, so I don't consider myself a young founder anymore. And I am just really happy to be here to talk about a product that we care about and a problem space we care about. You know, what makes great founders, and Gary's a great investor because he's a product person and, and he has, uh, he's empathetic and he's had all these problems and boards and he's had home runs. Yeah. What was your itch? What is it about this problem that got you excited? First, explain Surfboard and then what was the itch? Like, what is it about it? Yeah, of course. So Surfboard is the communication interface between companies and their board members their investors, their advisors, anyone who's external to the company, but important to the company. Um, we make it easier for founders and their boards and important stakeholders to really come together and work together and help founders get the most out of these interactions so the companies can be more successful. Um, my personal background has been basically starting my career in investment banking at Morgan Stanley and then I did venture capital for a couple of years. And through those journeys, I got exposure to sit on boards 
and also managed boards. What I realized was a lot of first-time founders, most first-time founders, I should say, have no knowledge and experience whatsoever in managing boards. It's the byproduct of creating their companies, but it's an important byproduct that really can make or break the company. Um, there is a pretty big variance out there in terms of functional boards, highly effective boards, and the vast majority that's really ineffective and kind of just boring and a waste of time. And there's the other problem is a lot of these seed companies, and again, you'll tell me who you're specifically built for, like size to size. What, what is the perfect size for a surfboard customer? What does it look like today? So um, it's ideal for companies that have two plus external board members. That's usually when they start to think about processes and build workflows around things. When it's one person external, things can be a little casual. Um, so we're looking at seed Series A companies increasingly earlier now with companies forming boards earlier on um, in this current funding cycle. Yeah, things have changed, right? We went from like, ah, governance to uh, <laughs> maybe we should consider governance. Yeah, totally. The The current economy, I mean, investors are, are just more um, worried about controlling um, and information rights, really. So we're seeing earlier stage companies getting boards earlier on. To me, that's actually a blessing because, I mean, I always advise founders to get boards earlier on because the more years you have been running a board, keeping records and following the baselines of corporate governance, the more robust, the more trusted your entity, your company is for later on M&A opportunities or IPO opportunities. You're just better prepared that way. Yeah, it's just like basic sense. And I think we were at peak no governance in the last year, if we think about, let's just go down the food chain, because you worked at Morgan Stanley, well-educated, you've seen, we've all, like, you're on both sides of the table. Well, you've been on both sides. You're on this side now. I'm on both <laughs> sides of the table consistently, and I can't believe what I'm saying. I mean, I'm easily duped because I'm a salesman and I'm a seed investor. You're going to dupe me. You're going to dupe me. I can't do much due diligence other than play with the product. There's no money in the bank when we generally invest. So I like that part of the food chain because you dupe me, you only dupe me, right? I got to go call my LPs and I got to say I'm an idiot. We wired to a, a complete fraudster. Hasn't happened directly. So Great. But that's because I have a team and Tom, we do background checks and, and we, we're generally playing with the product. If it's a good product, there's, no, there's less reason to cheat. And that's what makes yes. software interesting. But now we entered this new era and these are big blowups, right? I mean, you know talk about we work and then we we really fresh in my mind is ftx where yeah what there was literally no governance from the get-go but no one <laughs> even asked for it right like right what surprised you about the ftx thing? it's i mean i i've read a couple of articles about how simple that diligence process was and how successful um the founder was in creating that FOMO in the funding rounds mm -hmm. um, that just made investors wanting to put in money without looking twice at uh, any you know evidence or any source of numbers. And in a perfect world, surfboard is something, if it became a verb, I'm thinking way ahead, this is how Gary thinks, it's just, can we see the surfboard, right? Like in a perfect world, it's like, let's just at least show us a process. And no one now people will just say, can you show us some board minutes? Just <laughs> um, so what is the basic wedge that you're thinking about in a world that FTX, WeWork, Tiger? What is the because a pitch will get easier to founders. It's like, hey, even if your VCs say you don't need to do this, surfboards a product for you. So what's the initial wedge that you're thinking through? And let's brainstorm this out. But what's the surf, simple wedge that you think about? Yeah, um, so we deal with two types of founders, the absolute newbies who have no idea whatsoever about, you know, building a board meeting, how to structure a board meeting, what goes into a board deck. Um, we have built in modules that are really beginner friendly to help you build mm -hmm. your meeting from scratch. Um, so that instead of asking your investors, that really helps like just yes. seeing that, just seeing that laid out like templates is great. Yeah. I mean, typically what's done today is people would go around, and ask for sanitized versions of board decks. Um, and guess, guess what? Those sanitized versions of board decks don't apply to your business. Um, it's not your sector. It's not your stage. Um, and you're not really seeing the best in class examples that are relevant to you. 
So we are taking on that initiative to build all those templates and modules to help you start from scratch. Genius. Um, if, if you are coming to us as an experienced founder that you have an existing flow, an existing board deck even that you'd like to work with, we have a pretty robust product to take in, whether it's a Google slide deck or a PowerPoint or a keynote or spreadsheets and videos. There's a lot of different media formats today that people use for board meetings and all of those work nicely in Surfboard. So we can really help you structure that and turn a typical one-sided readout session into an interactive discussion. And that's when you get the most out of uh, your board's network and expertise and all the great things happen. You know, my one thing that I, I never got responded to by you, but I, I, I generally ask founders when we invest, could we change the name to Howie? What was your reason for not changing the name to Howie? <laughs> Can it, as no one's agreed yet, but I'm still, I still ask. You're I don't trying. even know if the email got forwarded by, by uh, sometimes Gary may not forward it. Was it ever brought up to you that, uh, that I thought a, a better name for the product was Howie? <laughs> no, <laughs> That's not <a> no. yet. <laughs> okay. So where did surfboard come from? What is, I mean, I love the word board. What's the play on words there that you like? Yeah, well, we wanted to have a really easy flow to the name. Uh, boardroom has this really dull meaning, I kind of image fixated on <laughs> just the name board. is It can be really boring. Um, so we basically wanted to look for a name that introduces a lightweight feeling to things and something that people look forward to. And surfing in the summertime seems like just that perfect word that has board in it, but it's totally opposite to a typical board image. And what's the extension for surfboard? What is the full name of the website? The full name is surfboard.team. It's the team coming together to work on this. So your leadership team, your board team, it's one single team. That's awesome. And so what was the thing that drove you that this was the, the company you want to start and the product that you wanted to do? What was the moment? Well, basically looking at the boards I've been part of, just looking at the variants, the, the founders who've done a good job organizing everything, um, staying on top of everything, and founders who've not done a good job, what I realize is I really want to empower founders, regardless of their comfort and experience level, to be able to communicate confidently and efficiently with their important stakeholders like their board members and investors. Yeah. It's not something that people come, you know, equipped with. They're they're here to build products and they're here to solve tough problems in the world and bring customers the best user experience in their brands. Um, they're not necessarily equipped with the network and the experience to do this job efficiently. So it'll be really cool for us to be able to empower all future founders to do this efficiently. Love it. So you go down this path. How did you find social leverage? So it's actually through a college friend of mine. Um, he, he's also a happy LP in the fund that I later found out. But I told him that no, I was... No, who is this? We don't, have, we don't, we don't <laughs> take lightly to having happy LPs. Uh, his name is Scott Law. Um, he is Yeah, I don't running... like him. <laughs> Scott doesn't listen to this. Scott's, Scott's overrated. <laughs> the, Scott. uh, uh, so wait a minute. Scott's sending us stuff he doesn't like? Is that how this came about? No. So Scott is um, healthcare a great investor. healthcare investor. Yes. So he's really hilarious and good guy. We're LPs of his, actually, so we share oh, nice. deals. So, so, so Scott is very good friends with Gary. So he, he pings Gary. Mm -hmm. And what was that like talking to Gary? Because I find him difficult. What was that like? <laughs> Um, he's, we'll cut this out. He, <laughs> Gary's definitely a really calm poker face kind of guy um, on the call. Right, huh? um, hard to read his emotions on the call. Um, I, I actually got a chance to, to talk to some founders um, to do some reverse diligence on the investors. And one of the questions they asked was, is it intimidating to talk to Gary? Do you find him easy to talk to about challenges that founders go through? Which Given his background, I would assume that's the case. I mean, he's a, he's a legend. He's a quiet legend. You're very lucky. I always tell founders when they finally call me and ask me, what do you think? I'm like, well, you're so much better off with Gary than me. <laughs> um, and you're seeing that today. But really, he has this great instinct for founders and, and a quiet killer 
in terms of product and instincts. It's been fun to be able to work with him on, on stuff because he really understands yeah. kind of good products and, and good product people. So how far along were you when you, you first talked to Gary? Because I think it's very smart and founders aren't doing this. And I've had to spend two years talking to founders because things have been, in my mind, overpriced, trying to sell them on why they should lower their valuation. I know no one, this just sounds comedic <laughs> that I say this, but like why does valuation matter so much to them if they're trying to truly build a billion dollar company? Um, mm -hmm. And though for two years it was like, why don't the founders do some research on truly who's going to be their investor? And that just wasn't happening, right? It was right. funny because there was no due diligence going the other way. It was just like, oh, you know, money's money. So we, what made you want to do calls on Gary? Because that's an important part of the process. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's really important to know who I'm working with because it is a long-term commitment, a long-term relationship that we're building earlier on in the, in the company's journey. And I want to make sure that I'm working with people I like and people who are super helpful around the table. And to your point, there there's always that kind of obsession with numbers earlier on. <laughs> Uh, but it's really important for founders to get over that because if you have a longer game that you're playing, it really doesn't matter. Correct. The five, ten sort of difference earlier on in the process of the company. Um, to us, that's actually what happened. Gary is not the highest number coming into the process, but he is mm -hmm. the smarter guy who asks the smartest questions on the calls. And that gave me a lot of comfort in working with him. Yeah, it's a, a note to founders, because I'm not saying I'm that good at it. It's a note <laughs> to founders when we meet people that have great products that still want to work with us, because we don't compete. Social leverage prides itself on, like, we're not going to compete. Mm -hmm. Money's money. You have to like us. This is a 10-year process. And we, we got to the period a couple of years ago where we were like, well, hang on. If they really believe a billion-dollar company, because we've seen billion-dollar companies, we work backwards, and we'll get back to governance in a second, I just want to go th inside the mind of someone that did the work to pick us too. What is an extra 20 mil on a, of course it's real money, but if that's what they're arguing, they shouldn't be arguing that two or 3%. If the company is going to be successful, there's so much slippage along the way that they should be happy. It's their first investors. You have to visualize the people you're going to be working with for 10 years. Right. This is not just a basic transaction. This just goes back to governance. It's like, that's why we love this idea when we passed around Surfboard. We're like, this is it. Like when we saw AngelList, we were like, this is it. Because Naval understood <laughs> things at a certain level, right? This is before our friend and we invested. We saw Carta and just loved the idea. And Carta back then was a four million valuation. I don't know if you know wow. the story, but it was four million valuation. So it wasn't like because of valuation that I passed. Uh, it was back in May 13 or 14. It was just like, I just felt like anybody could build it. And I just didn't get the vibe that, Henry could build it. So mm -hmm. mistake on me. And Henry's a billionaire and he did a deal at four million valuation. So I, I just have a tough time and YC has to do their thing. I have a, t and this is what's led to part of the governance problem is money's free. So no one really has to do due diligence in a world of free money. You still did the due diligence. So it's on both sides. was my long point of getting here. And so kudos to you for just doing some work because this check that you're taking has strings attached to it. And we try and tell that to founders, which means yeah, you know, a board can mean many different things, but it's great to have process. And it's great to think these things through before you start, right? It's great to think through the cap table. It's great to think through who's going to be in the room with you. It's great to think through how a meeting should be run. And so, you know, right now, I would say it's email, text, and a board deck. Knowing that process is so entrenched, where do you think you get the founders to understand this, to sell them the product. Because in the event, someone's got to be the person that puts their hand up and say, get surfboard. So assuming people have heard the name, what is the trigger point that uh, you have to come over to okay, say, ah, email's good enough, and I'll send them the PDF the night before, and blah, 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 or we'll work in a Google Doc. So what are the things that you have to overcome the objections to, to get this product going? Well, I would say that there's actually a ton of things that's happening in between those board meetings. And that's actually the meat of the context. So things mm -hmm. like happy customer tweets, testimonials, a product feature release, a marketing campaign, or maybe a new team member joining the team. All of these seem to be trivial details that will get, get cut if you're thinking about a board meeting every quarter for three hours. But this is actually the context that if you share this, 
in a way that's effortless to you, that actually becomes the foundation. And the board members and your investors will have much greater context about your company. And that's actually going to make your company more top of mind and make it more likely for them to help you to get faster funding, faster access to talents and customers. Um, so we really think of the communication as an ongoing interface versus a uh, quarterly update PDF that you just distribute through email. So how does it work exactly? What's the first step? You sign up, you go to surfboard.team, the venture capitalist or the seed investor says, try surfboard. Mm -hmm. You want the founder to do it at the two board person level or CFO? Who, who interacts? Is it open for the whole team, obviously? Right. Usually earlier stage is the CEO taking the charge. Um, later on, it becomes CFO, chief of staff, CEOs, um, the, the rest of the leadership team. But yeah, it is a team sport. So founders, co-founders, leadership, head of engineering, head of product, people who typically contribute to the, to the updates and the board decks will come together and do their own sections um, and sort of fill out um, and build out really the, the information pipelines to get all these updates synced into Surfboard. Mm -hmm. And then your board investors gets invited to, to log in and, and check out. And they can log in at any time to see just a constant flow of things happening at the company level. Um, so we are minimizing the updates that need to happen at the actual meetings and just making whenever you need to talk meetings, one on ones, um, any calls you may have, just turn that into now that both sides have the context, just a discussion about what's important. So no more one sided slide PowerPoint readout. Do you think it's a people problem or a product problem? That's a great question. Um, so the best boards did it by being hyper organized and disciplined. The, the boards that I mentioned mm -hmm. being highly effective and highly functional, um, they really figure out a way to build out a robust workflow to piece together multiple existing tools. I like to think of, the, of this as your, the example of all of us have friends who would build out a spreadsheet to keep track of their daily to do's. Um, <laughs> you, the daily to do's in a spreadsheet that takes a lot of effort to do that. And it's not for the vast majority, especially given how busy founders are already with running their businesses day to day. So we want to actually just do you give use it to do it. I write things <laughs> down on a legal pad because I feel writing. Do you use it to do this? How many thousand to do apps? Has any of them ever really made it? Yeah, because you're right. It's a tedious. I think it's a good habit. It's just not something that's monetizable. Right. Yeah. So so what we want to do is to actually with people who don't want to even bother with all these to-do apps, just give them the flow and give them the, the tool, the workflow, the system to get to the board success point with really minimum effort. That's actually appealing to founders from, you know, people all want to look smart and look capable without spending a ton of effort. And we want to give them that superpower to do this. Yeah. No pressure on you, but like just behind the scenes, this is a big fucking idea. And it's like a wedge that is overwhelming, but really genius. So kudos to you for even attacking this problem because it's such a massive, boring, <laughs> hacked together process already that it's a little bit daunting to just start down this path. And so what does the team look like today? You've raised from us. We're the lead investor. But what does the team look like today? There's six of us right now. Um, besides myself, it's mostly engineers on the team. And we also just brought on a content person. Um, going along the lines of creating templates and building blocks to help people understand what to put into, you know, a board deck or a investor update. Um, so speaking of content, there's actually... It's fantastic. I've, yeah. Yeah, I spend hours there going through it. I got to add some stuff to it. <laughs> have you made it open so other people can drop stuff in? I know the answer, but have you made it open? We are in the process of getting ready for that. So right now it's all content generated by us, but we're, we're hoping to open up to the pro users out there, people who have been on boards and have things to share. Um, it is ultimately a, a pretty wide open space right now for content. Um, so love to, love to take your best in class examples. And I have none, but I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I, I feel like I should put my name on a few things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've really learned here that I would not be a good board member, I do not, which is important that I admit it too. 
I mean, this is so much fun, and I like your attitude towards this, is that this is such a win-win. The economy right now is perfect for you, right? Like, because mm-hmm. people can talk about the word governance. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so funny because crypto has the governance token, which is a comedy of comedy, because it's such an important word, and it's been butchered by a fake, you know, the shitcoin <laughs> industry. No offense to shitcoiners, but governance is is such a neglected term and then abused by the industry that was led by uh, Sam at FTX. It's interesting. So what is the sexy term for this? Is it just governance? Like, I love the term governance, and I think it's been neglected, and there's too much negligence, and that goes to, up to the presidential level, and even Elon Musk and, and these big companies would have too many people. What's the term that gets you excited Yeah, I mean, that's actually something that we're going through right now in redesigning our website. We currently have modern governance labeled across the website on the top. Um, Mm -hmm. I am not really sure that this resonates 100% with founders. Seeing governance Mm -hmm. sometimes signals, you know, potential um, control issues and being potentially fired from their CEO position by investors. That could be scary. Um, So we are looking at the other way of narrating the story, which is fundamentally, if you have an engaged board, you have really engaged investors, they are going to be helping you getting to that customer introduction, getting to that talent introduction, and maybe that next round of funding faster. So that's what high performing CEOs should care about. Um, But it is ultimately um, making your company successful by leveraging all of your resources and the superpower of your board that is previously untapped yeah, so you, I've sent a bunch of suggestions for the website. You've not, <laughs> not seen it alone. So I don't like the term modern governance, but yeah, this is like such an important point. And I'm, my audience, we, we joke around a lot, but like governance is such a serious topic. And I've just been pounding the table because on both sides, I try and back off boards because it's such a responsibility. And you've been on boards and you've seen it good and bad. Um, I love observing mm-hmm. because that's how I learn. I and mean, observing means don't talk unless you're asked. But also, the only way I can learn, just like you having an open system for good people to drop in good ideas, you can't come up with all the best board decks internally. Um, you know, the word observer is an important term too in governance. It's okay to have a, a certain amount of observers looking over people's shoulders. Um, what else should the audience? know about you and surfboard because i've been you know goofing off a little bit well if you are a founder we'd absolutely love to hear from you stop wasting your time on meaningless board updates and start to really leverage the expertise and network you have around your table around your board table and we are really just the best founder welfare that you can give yourself um to basically save you a ton of time and more importantly, really, just to get it, getting to that next hire, the next big client, and closing that next round sooner. So that can make a huge difference to the success of your company. And if you are a board member or an investor, I would love to hear also from you to offer this to your portfolio companies so you can really contribute meaningfully to the success of your investments. It's just so much to learn. It's like Canva with like putting together PDFs. Like surfboard's potential is this is a great opportunity for communication, right? The board meeting is a great place. First of all, you're creating a system where people can throw stuff in and be a little bit prepared so they don't have to jam the board deck together at the last minute, right? Right. It's a process. Um, The second most important thing is like fake it till you make it. Like even if you don't think you should do it, you should do it. Like, I don't think I need a to-do thing because I have yellow legal pads. I write them down. I may never look at it again, <laughs> but like writing, the process of writing it down ingrains it in your memory somewhere. No Absolutely. matter how smart or dumb you are. And Brad Feld, one of my favorite investors, I didn't know you had, had chatted with him and one of my mentors, he has been all over this thing for 50 years. And, and I say that mm-hmm. uh, it probably is 50 years, but like Brad been through, Feld who's been a guest on the podcast many times, and lucky to have him as a mentor, he went through the 2000 crisis and been sued as a CEO by, you know, and has been on both sides of the table regarding boards and really has taken this seriously over the years. Um, And he recently mentioned effective boards are critical at this moment in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Highly functioning boards 
can help startups navigate this moment, while dysfunctional and weak boards can accelerate the demise of startups. Mm -hmm. What's your thought there? Mm -hmm. Well, I totally agree. I also love this quote. Um, it is it is a time for us to actually think about putting some process in place to if going back to one of our earlier points that we talked about, if you are in this for the long game, don't worry too much about the potential cons concerns around giving up controls, because ultimately, if you want to build a successful company, you need to have really good guidance around the board table and get all the help you can from people around you who care about you. So I yeah. am all for building a board earlier on. Yeah, this is the kind of product that at least we can, we love investing in, in founders and products where we just live with the product ourselves, like where we just like happy to use it. And uh, so congrats to you. I mean, are you having fun? I mean, it's too early, like this economy <laughs> is so tough. Like what's the hardest part right now? Um, the hardest part is definitely keeping in mind that we want to preserve cash for our runway at the same time, be optimistic about the growth. So kind of growing responsibly, um, with the money that we have, it's, it's a lesson that every founder needs to learn. Um, I am not scared about the downturn. It is actually a great time to build things that people love and care about. So very hopeful about what's coming next. Yeah, I think. This is when, so like, we've been just, you know, farting around, waiting for the downturn, and now that it's here, it's never fun. Right. But we love, this is when good stuff gets built. This is when you build trust, everybody. It's a hard time is the best time to build trust. And this is when hard conversations happen. This is when you find out who was willing to do some work. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm glad that you have Gary in your corner. Obviously, you got the whole team. Have You've met the whole team, right? Yes. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody in person next uh, next March. What a, what a treat it is to work with Social Leverage, no? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She's bought into the whole hype cycle. Uh -huh. the, um, and what, where were you born? I was born in Beijing, uh, Beijing, China. Right. And I was, uh, I was there until I finished high school, and I came here to the States to finish my college. And where are your parents? They're still in Beijing at the moment. And it's been a hard few years for you, though. Absolutely. It's, it's been really hard to, to not be able to see them whenever I want, uh, given the quarantine policy. But hopefully, just hopefully, this will uh, loosen up soon. And what's the mode of communication for you back and forth, Beijing and you? Yeah, well, mostly just through WeChat. Um, I mean, it's similar to WhatsApp, but basically we talk, we text, and then we do video calls on uh, the app. Any family members here with you? Nope. Just by myself. Well, with my husband. <laughs> and do you guys have kids? I forget. We don't. We have two demanding cats, so you may occasionally hear them in the background. And that clause that we put in our, our things where you're not allowed to have kids for the first few years <laughs> of startups, was that offensive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that wasn't in? See, Tom cuts out all my good clauses. <laughs> the, uh, I felt like, wow, Chuhan agreed to those terms? Okay. She's my kind of founder. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but it sounds like that clause was out, Canute. So yeah. it seems like no one listens to me. It's, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a padded room talking on a podcast uh, room. <laughs> are you bullish or bearish? Like, what is what are you optimistic about? Because you've had a hard two years. Your parents are in, in Beijing. You're, right. you're inundated with news. You're covering China. You're covering U.S. news. You got a company. You got a husband. You got <laughs> uh, you know cats are very stressful. Like they're looking at you with disdain all the time. So what is there to be optimistic about? Yeah, well, I am optimistic about just the wave that we've seen for founders to really emerge from just all corners of the world, really, with, I mean, mm -hmm. remote work being a trend. Um, we're seeing innovation happening from every corner of the world. And that really, to me, means the next generation of founders are not necessarily going to be Silicon Valley based, and they're not going to have that network and experience so what if we could empower them, we could empower more innovation to happen and empower the founders to be more successful and be more confident and more efficient um, and do all the things they need to do while getting a really engaged board built out on the side from using Surfboard. So that's what I'm hopeful about. Well, we're going to help. I'm excited for you. Just hit us up any time when we have stuff to talk about. But I think uh, I can see you being a regular here because this is just we got it. we got to dig in right now. And you know, the last cycle gave us AngelList and gave us Carta and 
Slack and Zoom, and um, this will be a much better boom on the other side. This will be a governance-led, um, intent-led, let's really decide if we want to do this, right? Web 2 was, come, you know, in the great financial crisis, I get it. Like, we had the roaring, we had our roaring 20s. That was led by the mobility boom in AWS. This new boom has to come from a different place. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited for you. Hopefully we can help. P- hit, hit us up anytime. Will do. Really, Knut, don't hit Knut up. He's never done something like this before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but me, you know, go through my secretaries and see if you can reach me. Uh, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about uh, what you're building. Congrats. Thank you so much. I will definitely reach out plenty of times. Talk to you soon. Great. Talk to you soon. K-Nut. Hey, Howard. Delightful. Absolutely. We have very few delightful people. Like Ben Hunt's great. Jim O'Shaughnessy's great. Not delightful. <laughs> True Hunt's great and delightful. That's a good combo. I'm not delightful. Neither I'm great I. at what I do. There's nobody better in podcasting. There you go. Is this even on? Oh, hopefully you got this. Oh, one. yeah. I got all of this. Uh, so, True Hunt, we love everything about this idea. Yes. Very hard to do, but big, big vision and big opportunities. So we're excited about those things. That's what Social Leverage likes to do. We like to build cool stuff with people with big visions. Um, and that's, uh, you know, today was a little bit goofy, but hopefully we got the message across. As funny as I try and be around the point, Chuhan's dead serious about this subject, so are we. Um, you are listening to Panic with Friends. Canute texts me 70 times a day to make sure that I'm here once a week to do a podcast, half-ass, uh, to try and keep the two or three listeners out there happy, um, you can go to um, Spotify, Apple, uh, Elon Musk, I'm sure will have a podcast thing. He's fighting with everybody soon. Uh, Google, search my name, Howard Linson, L-I-N-D-Z-O-N, or Panic with Friends. You will subscribe and not be bothered. You will get an alert once a week, at generally Thursdays. And um, Knut, that was fantastic. Thanks for doing this, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Howard Lindzen is the founder and general partner at Social Leverage. All opinions expressed by Howard and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Social Leverage or StockTwits. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for decisions. Guests may maintain positions and securities discussed in this podcast.